Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are playing Subaru Engine Cornador. Dead person doctor. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are playing Subaru Engine Coronor. So what I got in front of me is a bottom end, or I guess a rotating assembly, because it's not really the bottom because it's in the middle. This is an FB25 out of a 2013 Subaru Forester. So like I said, this is a Subaru FB engine. It's kind of similar to an FA, but not really. Uh, the FA and the FB, they both have different heads, pistons, rods, a lot of different things, but they are very similar, but they're not. The FBs will be found in your everyday, you know, legacies, non-turboed, in a, you know, Foresters, Outback, stuff like that. The FAs, on the other hand, uh, the high compression version is found in the BRZs. Uh, the turbos are going to be found in your Ascents, your WRXs, your XT, stuff like that. They took the replacement of the EJ series of engine, which Subaru used for a very long time. This is the first F series of block that I've ever taken apart or got down to bare block. And if you sit an EJ series of engine beside the F series of engine, they are similar, but they are also very different. One thing that I noticed right away was on the EJ series of engine, you have four individual plugs that you have to pull out and you actually separate the piston from the rod in order to dismantle the engine. The F series of block you do like any normal engine where you take the, you disconnect the rod from the crank and you pull it out the cylinder, rod and piston as one. This engine came out of a 2013 Forester and it came in with a horrible rod knock and as I got it like down to bare block now, um, cylinder one is not in sync with the other three cylinders. So what we are gonna do is we are going to split the case half. Well, we're gonna remove the rods and the pistons, split the case half and uh, see what the damage is. So after making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, I have to go back to the old shop because on the F series of engine, the rod cap bolts are, I believe they call them inverted torques. And I don't have any at the new shop, so I gotta run back to the old one, dig through the toolbox, see if I can find the right size I need. All right, we are leaving the old shop, E14, the socket I needed, found it. Definitely gonna invest in a set of these just so I have them. Um, stopped over to see mom and dad. Mom made sausage gravy, so I was there a little bit longer than I wanted to be. Well, um, I will admit to all of you guys, I'm not ashamed. It's, this is a learning experience for me. Um, I was wrong. So, the like I said earlier, the FAs and the FBs are different. And I've never done one of these before, and this is all new to me. Uh, FA rod cap bolts are E14s and the FB uh, rod cap bolts are E12s. So tomorrow I'm going to go to the harbors of the freight and pick up a um, set of inverted Torx sockets. So I think tonight we're gonna be done and I will see you tomorrow night. The next day. So we are back, day two of tearing into the FB engine. I did not go to Harbor Freight. I went to the old shop and dug through the toolboxes some more and found the socket I needed. Just to give you an idea, I told you yesterday, or well, earlier in the video, that uh, cylinder one was not, uh, not doing too well. And uh, well, uh, I don't think thicker oil is gonna take that knock away, but, or Lucas anyway. <laughs> And just to give you a visual, this is the head gasket that came off of the FB engine. And this is an EJ head gasket. This came out of the STI in 2020 when I did the big build. E12 inverted Torx socket. Give a little hit. All right, loose there. Rod cap bolt. One, this one's already loose. We're gonna pop this off here. Ooh, buddy. Here we go. Let's see the damage. Ooh, very nice. So, um, well, there is no bearing left. That is uh, definitely for sure. The crank is pretty gouged up gorged up let's pop this one out 
Definitely lack of lubrication. That's uh, pretty rough there. That's not good. This one's the same way. That is, uh, you probably can't, I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but that is really rough. That is, that's not good. So this cylinder basically is garbage. I'm gonna take a look at the actual cylinder walls and see what they look like. I don't know if you can see, but there is no cross hatching left. It is literally um, gouged up and down with the piston. So when the piston went around and went up and down, it gouged the uh, cylinder wall pretty bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop the other three pistons out and uh, we'll get ready to split the case. You'll do cylinder one and four. So this is one, two, three, and four. Um, when you do the rod caps. So cylinder four. Hey, this one still has a bearing in it. That's good. Yeah, that is a complete night and day difference. That actually looks really good. Uh, there is no scoring on the bearing. Yeah, that one still looks really good. That's crazy how cylinder one basically ate itself and the other one, well, at least cylinder four still looks good. The bearing does not look terrible. It's got some marks in it, if you can see. See those? I think there was definitely some dirt and debris in the oil. It kind of got to the other bearings, which, you know, you completely lost an entire rod bearing, so there's gonna be some stuff floating around in the oil. So this will be cylinder two. Yep, one, two. This one is broke free. Go ahead and jump around to, there is my dog. Why is, Dio, why are you out of the cage? Hold, please. Well, after uh, corralling my dogs and eating a banana and getting a glass of milk, I think we're ready to continue now. I don't remember where I left off. Uh, this, this looks loose, I think. Okay, this is cylinder number dos. This one feel, felt pretty good, no play. Oh, there goes the cap. Cylinder two, cap, uh, you got some scoring right there, if you can see, put up the camera. You can see the line, got some scoring there. So, yeah. Definitely in a bunch of chunks out of it. Definitely had some stuff floating around in the oral. But like I said, you know, you, you eat a bearing and a, a bearing disappears in a cylinder. You're gonna have some stuff floating around. All right, so this one, same thing, definitely. Um, man, the sidewalls on these things are just ate up. I mean, that the skirt of the piston is ate up and then, then Oh yeah, same, oh geez, this one left, yeah, this one's like valleys in the cylinder wall and the, and the skirt here is just, that's rough. That's like 60 grit. All three cylinders that I've removed, um, the cylinder wall and the, the piston skirt is completely gouged and ate up. So a lot of uh, bearing material floating around in the oil. All right, cylinder three. Oh, there goes the bearing. Bearing is lost. So let's pop out. Oh, yeah. Oh, there is the bearing out of the rod. So this is the rod. Oh, buddy. Oh, jeez. <sighs> All right. This is the bearing that was on the rod itself, not the cap. Um, yeah. Again, cylinder three, the piston skirt is completely ate up. And oh, yeah, cylinder's gone too. So this part right here is very similar to an EJ. You have 10 12 point bolts, 12 millimeter 12 point bolts that hold the case half together. And on the side here, you have five 12 millimeter uh, bolts that hold the top half of the case together. This is very similar to an EJ. I'm going to hit these with the impact and see if I can get them to budge. If not, we will get the breaker bar. You had to run through each of these and hit them with the breaker bar. Not, they weren't terribly tight, but I think my battery is running low. Um, Yes, I'm using a chrome socket. It's only 12 millimeter, 12 point socket I got, so whatever. There's those, I'm gonna grab a Magnat. And washers. We are ready to split the case half. So my STI, this actually fought me a little bit when I split the case half. Did not want to come apart. So 
This one I can be a little more rough with because it's not it's it's junk. I'm not gonna do anything with this engine, so I'll probably end up using the big freaking hammer. It does have their dowel pins to line everything up, so uh, that will fight you a little bit when you split. But ooh, we got a separation. Ooh, there's definitely a lot of bearing material and crap in there. The mains. Yeah, that one's here. That one's pretty bad. You can see that one. Crank beside cylinder one right there doesn't look terrible, but um, definitely scored up. There was, oh, that one's bad too. Let's see if I can. That one's pretty bad. It's got a nice line right there, if you can see. That one's junk. Oh, that one's bad. Oh, now it's, it's gone now. Yep, that was pretty bad too. So the problem was definitely obvious. I mean, uh, cylinder one rod bearing was completely gone and with it being disintegrated, it sent bearing material all through the engine. But uh, if you were to rebuild this engine, I would just do it all. I would get a new crank, rods, pistons. Well, actually the cylinder walls were scored up bad too that I don't even know if you could save the block. Basically you would need a, I would go short block if this was my engine or a customer engine. Somebody's honked at me, how you doing? Um, but yeah, it's pretty tore up. Short block would be your best option. So after filming about three minutes of video to end this video off explaining what we're gonna be doing in the next couple of videos and into the fall, I went back in to edit and found out that the um, audio was garbage. So now I have to redo this part of the video. Summer might be winding down, but we still have lots to do and lots of videos planned. So um, this weekend is my birthday weekend. Next weekend is Gearhead Fest in uh, Springfield, Ohio, which is a really cool car show. Um, Fielding Shredder is going to be there from that show Hyperdrive off of Netflix, which is pretty cool. And then after that, we have the last import face-off in Ohio, which is at National Trails Raceway Labor Day weekend. Several videos uh, upcoming, uh, including we are debating what we're going to be doing with that this winter. Uh, we actually probably won't do any more camping because I'm hoping we sell our camper tomorrow. But uh, this one is coming up, this video that is an EJ253 out of an 09 Outback that overheated to a point that it will not run anymore. So that one's pretty much, that, that engine's pretty much junk. I think I'm gonna use that as a teaching experience for my brother. We're gonna tear into that just like we did that one and kind of just see what damage has been done. So that's gonna be pretty fun. We are also going to dig into my daily. I have an 09 Outback Sport that needs basically the engine pulled, timing belt, water pump. It needs the engine pulled because it's got a massive oil leak that I need to fix. It's got some tranny issues, a whole list of problems. So we're gonna, I'm gonna make a video on that, pulling the motor and fixing all the leaks. Yeah, we got lots of videos planned to end off 2023. It's sad we already have to think about the end of the year, but you know, time marches on. Um, please like and subscribe, comment. I love answering comments. Um, we really appreciate the love and support we've been getting on the channel. Again, we appreciate everybody for watching and uh, we'll see you next time. Wait, hold on, time out. Um, last weekend we went to the truck and tractor pulls and I got some video of the tr semis and the diesel pickups. So if you like truck and tractor pulls, um, stick around. I'll throw a few videos in here in a second. So enjoy. <laughs>
down by John Kasser, not again. Chasing 312 and 5. Please like and subscribe. Be sure to check out her Etsy account, the Sweetheart Design, for custom illustrations, vinyls, and t-shirts. She can make anything you want. And use code boostin underscore DC on jacksbox.com for 15% off.